In this region, we will determine whether the set of all pairs of the real numbers of the form A with the operation B is the addition and C is the scalar multiplications, whether this set of real numbers objects or members or vectors, they form a vector space or not. So for the vector space, the members could be from different groups of vectors. For example, you could have a U1, U2, this is a general one. So the other members will be in this form, such as V1, V2, X1, X2, or Y1, Y2. As long as they have this similar form, they are in the two coordinate system vectors. And you could have X1 family. So in this X1 family, the other members will be in the will be have will be having the similar form as well. It could be Y1, X1, X1, 1, V1, U1, and so on. As long as the second member, second fact coordinate is 1. So this is the typical characteristics of this group of members. Or you could have a factors where the first entry could be 0 and the second entry can be any number any real number y so the rest of the members in this group would be something like 0x 0x1 0w and 0u so the second coordinate here is a very arbitrary it could be any scalars or any real numbers as long as the first coordinate here must be 0 following the characteristics of this group of vectors or you could have a group of vectors where the members is a 2 by 2 matrices so you have an A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, D are constants. Or you could have an A1, A2, A3, A4. So A1, A2, A3, and A4, they are constant scalars as well. Or you could have P, Q, R, S, X, Y, Z, T. Any labeling or any entry here is OK, as long as they are the members of these 2 by 2 matrices. Or you could have a set of members of polynomial where you should have the polynomial equation should be in this form a naught plus a one x, where a naught and a one they are scalars, and x is the variable here. So the rest of the members of these polynomial polynomial equations will be something like b naught plus b one x, m naught m one x, p naught p one x. So as long as you define that the b here are the scalars, or the p here are the scalars, and m here are the scalars, or you could have a system of uh, members where there are three coordinates members so you have x y z where you could elaborate as pqr v u w b f any alphabet is okay as long as you have the characteristic of this group of vectors which is the three coordinate so you have different types of vectors or a group of vectors here and similar to the addition and scalar multiplications in the standard addition and scalar multiplications, this is what we have learned in the school. This is a standard addition where you have a two vectors addition A, B plus C, D. So the two members, the two members from this group of vectors. So when you sum them up, the A will be added to C, B will be added to D. So this is a typical addition. For the scalar multiplications, it's the same. So you just randomly multiply one of the group members here with the k, which is a constant. So you get a ka multiplied and a kb. So this is the typical standard addition and scalar multiplications. And this is not limited to the standard uh, or general matrix or vectors here. So a and b. It could be applied to other groups of vectors as well. For example, I'm going to take from the 0 and y. So 0 and y, the first member, and the other member could be 0 and x, or could be 0 and x1, 0 y, w, or 0 u. So it doesn't matter as long as you know how to differentiate it from the first vector, the 0 and y here. So we know that the addition is the common, the general, the standard addition. So 0 plus 0 is 0, and y plus x is y plus x. And the k multiply with the 0 and y, you should get k multiplied with 0, you should get 0 and k y here. So this is according to the standard addition and scalar multiplications. But sometimes we have some weird operations where the addition is not the typical addition in our verb, and similar for the multiplication as well. So let's look at one of the first weird operations where when you sum them up, the first entry of first coordinate added to the second coordinate and you should add a minus one at the back here, similar to the second one. So this is the addition 
conditions for this another space, the field space. So you should follow these addition rules whenever you come across addition, especially in your in the proving of ten axioms. Okay, any additions you have to use this rule negative one at the back, negative one at the back. And similarly for the scalar multiplications, the first multiplication, it doesn't matter what is the value of the U1 here. You should always end up with zero. And the second one is the normal multiplication. So this is the scalar multiplications rule set by the that particular vector space. So you have to follow as strong as you come across any multiplications in the proving of 10 axioms. So let's look at one example. So let's say I'm taking these members from this group of vector. So it's an x and 1. The second coordinate should be always 1. So I can x and 1 plus y and 1. And I know that the addition should follow this rule. So it should be x plus y and minus 1. Similar for the second one. So it should be 1 plus 1 minus 1. Sorry for the mistake here. It should be 1 plus 1 minus 1. So it should end up with maybe, let's say, 1. Okay. And the scalar multiplication here is k multiplied with x1. So this is a scalar multiplication. So you have to follow these multiplication rules where the first entry of first coordinate here must be 0. So this should be 0. And the second one will be k multiplied with the entry here. So in this case, it's k multiplied with 1, you have k. Or you could, so this is the typical weird operations. And of course, we have more than that. You have a second weird operation here. In this case, when you sum them up, the first coordinate here is the normal summation. But the second one, 1 plus 1, will always end up with 1. So it doesn't matter what is the members here. Okay, you will end up with 1 in the second entry here for addition. And for scalar multiplications, it doesn't matter what would be the value of the k here, the constant or the scalar here. When you multiply it with the vectors, you should square it up and multiply with the first entry. And the second entry will always be 1. It wouldn't be affected by the k. So this is the scalar multiplication rule set by another space. So you have to follow this. And of course, we have the third one. In this case, the, the addition is the standard one. But it's just that the multiplications, the first entry will always end up with zero. So whenever you come up, come across with these multiplications, the first entry of the product must be zero, and the second one is the standard multiplications. So we have plenty of weird operations here, and I won't be able to show show you all the weird operations. So we are just going to look at the first one and the third one for our example here, the proving of axioms, which I think that. The fourth axiom and the fifth axioms are two of the most interesting axioms. So the first until the third axioms, I leave it for you to try. But let's say in this case, I'm going to use the operation here. So this is the weird operation of addition and scalar multiplications. And according to axiom number four, there's a zero vector. When you add it with a particular members from that group of factors, you should get back the original one. And remember when I told you the zero vector here is not necessary has to be a vector spool of zero. It could be any other vectors. As long as when you add it up with the vectors, you should get it back here. So let's try with the left hand side first. So let's imagine that we are taking the members from this group of vectors. Okay, this group of vectors. So I can just label a1, a2, and u1, u2 as long as they belongs to that group of vectors because this is a two coordinates vectors. And so I have a1 plus u1 and negative 1, minus 1 because this is the addition rules given by the vec another space. So I have to follow it. And on the right hand side, I have this u. So on the right hand side, I will have u plus 0 here. So I should follow the original additions rules here. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that the 0 vector here, I assumed it as a, a1 and a2 vectors because I don't know what would be the value of these 0 vectors. So let's just assume it as a1 and a2. We'll find it out later on. So on the left-hand side, you end up with this. And on the right-hand side, we end up with this. And 
how to get it how to get these two terms equivalent to the original u u1 and u2 so in order to get u1 and u2 based on inspection i have to, we have to get rid of this term right the a1 minus 1 and a2 minus 1 so this must be 0 so i can say that the value of a1 is 1 and a2 is 1 such that when a1 is 1 and a2 is 1 you will end up with u1 and u2 here which is equivalent to the original vectors here u so in this case the zero vector here a1 a2 is actually 1 1 which proves that when i say the zero vector does not necessarily has to be a vector school of zero so in this case the zero vector for this system or this group of vectors is 1 1 and let's try with the fifth axiom so the fifth axiom is about the u plus a negative u equivalent to a zero vector which we have found in the fourth axiom here it must be 1 1 and we know that the negative u is actually the multiplications of negative 1 with u so negative 1 is actually a scalar and this involves multiplications so when you in when you see that there is a multiplications involved here you have to refer back to the original case here so this is the case of multiplication the first entry will always be zero and the second entry or coordinates will be the same the standard multiplication so in this case the first entry will always be zero and the second entry will be the normal multiplication so negative one multiplied with u2 and then we add it up u1 u2 plus the negative u which we have found out here zero and negative u2 so this is addition so addition you have to follow these rules where you have to add a minus one at the back here so this is u1 plus zero minus one and u2 minus u2 minus one so you end up with u1 minus one and minus one and this is not equivalent to the zero vector here one one and we say that axiom number five is violated so it is not a vector space so this group of vectors this group of vectors they are not the vector space then they do not form the vector space because they could not fulfill all the 10 axioms under this scalar addition this addition and this scalar multiplication rules now let's look at another example so in this case i'm going to use the yeah the standard one we're going to use this group of vectors as well but we are going to check whether it is a vector space under this vector addition and scalar multiplications conditions or not so in this case the addition is the standard one but the multiplications is the first one must be a zero so let's check it out I'll leave it for you to work out from the first and the fifth axioms but let's look at the 7, 8, 9 and 10 here so the 7 say that you multiply the two the addition of a two vectors or two members you should end up with the ku plus kv which is a scalar multiplications and the summation of them so the left hand side let's look at the left hand side so u plus v so u plus v involves the standard addition here according to these rules so we just write it out u1 plus v1 u2 plus v2 and this is multiplication right so the multiplication we should use this rule where the first entry must be zero and the second is the typical multiplication so the first entry must be zero and the second one so k can be multiplied to u2 and v2 here so this is what we got from the left hand side and let's look at the right hand side so ku plus kv so k multiply with u the u here is the u1 u2 v is v1 v2 so k multiply with u1 u2 and this involve multiplication so the first entry must be zero because according to the scalar multiplication rules in this space then we do the same for the v and we add it up so 0 plus 0 is 0 and this ku2 plus kv2 is ku2 plus kv2 here so the left hand side and the right hand side are the same so we say that axiom number 7 is valid or the members of these vectors that fulfill axiom number 7 and axiom number two, 10 
Number eight is the summation of two scalars multiplied with a vectors is equivalent to the individual summation of the scalar multiplications with the vectors. So in this case, I'm going to try on the left hand side first. And because k plus m is a scalar as well, so I'm just going to put them together, assume that this is a scalar, and this scalar multiplied with the vectors is a scalar multiplications. So the first entry here must be zero because according to the multiplication rule here. Then I continue with the second one, the second entry or second coordinate here is actually the normal multiplications. So zero and KU2 plus MU2. And let's look at on the right hand side. So KU plus MU and this is involved this involves the scalar multiplication. So you have the first entry must be zero and KU2 plus this and then this is a typical addition. So you just add them up. So you check the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side and say we can say that axiom number eight is valid or being fulfilled. So let's look at axiom number axiom number nine. So this is a multiplication of a k with another m which is another scalar multiplications with the u vectors here is equivalent to this. So let's work on from the left hand side first. So k multiplied with the m multiplied with u. So m multiply with u, where u is the vector u1, u2, so m is a scalar. So this is a scalar multiplication, and we have to follow the rules, where the first entry is 0, and the second one is a typical multiplication, so m, u2. Then this is another scalar multiplication. So the first entry must be 0, and k multiply to the second entry here, second coordinate here, so it's k, m, u2. And now let's work on the right hand side here. So k, m, is a multiplication of two scalars. So you will get a new scalars as well. So we just treat it as a scalar here. So this multiplication should produce zero in the first entry and then Km U2 on in the sec uh, second coordinate. So this is equivalent to the left hand side. So we say that this axiom number nine is fulfilled or valid. And the last one is the axiom number 10. It says that there is a multiplication of uh, 1. So 1 multiplied with the u, the vector, you should get back the original vector here. So let's look at axiom number 10. So 1u means that 1 multiplied with u, which means that the vector of u is being multiplied by a constant 1. So this is a scalar multiplication and we have to follow the rules of scalar multiplications where the first entry is 0 and this is the typical multiplication, the u2 with the 1. So because u is u1 and u2. So you end up with 0 and u2, which is not equivalent to the original vector here, u1, u2. So axiom number 10 is violated. And we say that it is not a vector space. All this group of vectors, u1, u2, v1, v2, they do not form a vector space because one of the axioms is being violated. So I hope that the determinations whether a group of vectors that form a vector space or not would be helpful. This video will be helpful to improve your understanding on how to check whether the set of a pairs of members here they form a vector space or not. Thank you.